The winter was long and harsh. Just when you think it will never end, you see a tiny speck of yellow popping up from the frosted ground. These hardy little flowers welcome you with a cheerful wave. Today, we are learning all about one of my favorite flowers, daffodils. These bright, cheerful flowers are among the first signs of spring, bringing color and life after the long, cold winter. But there's so much more to daffodils than just their beauty. Where do they come from? Why do they have such a strong connection to poetry and culture? And did you know they have some surprising scientific properties? In this video, we're going to explore the history, symbolism, biology, and cultural significance of daffodils, as well as some fun facts you might not have known. Let's get blooming. Daffodils belong to the genus Narcissus, which includes around 50 species and thousands of hybrid varieties. They are part of the Amarius family and are native to Europe and North Africa. These perennial plants are known for their trumpet-shaped flowers, usually yellow, though they can also be white, orange, or even pink. The flowers bloom in early spring, often emerging even when there is still snow on the ground. Daffodils grow from bulbs, which store nutrients to help them survive through winter. Their leaves are long and narrow, and their flowers typically have six petals surrounding a central corona or trumpet. They thrive in well-drained soil and full sunlight, making them a favorite for gardeners who want a burst of color after the dreary winter months. Daffodils have a long and rich history dating back thousands of years. The earliest records of daffodils come from the Mediterranean region, where they were cultivated for both their beauty and medicinal properties. The ancient Greeks and Romans admired daffodils and they spread them throughout their empires. In medieval Europe, daffodils were thought to have healing properties and were sometimes used in folk medicine. However, the plant contains toxic alkaloids, so its use in medicine was very limited. Over time, daffodils became more popular as ornamental flowers and breeders created new varieties and different colors and petal shapes. Daffodils come in a stunning variety of shapes, sizes, and colors, making them a versatile and beloved flower. The most common type is the trumpet daffodil, characterized by a long central trumpet surrounded by six petal-like tepals. However, daffodils can also be found in smaller, more delicate forms, such as the cyclomenius daffodil, which has narrow petals that curve back like the wings of a butterfly. For those who prefer bolder blooms, double daffodils feature multiple layers of petals, creating a fuller, more intricate flower. The miniature daffodil, often referred to as the wanquila, boasts smaller flowers with a sweet fragrance, perfect for garden borders or containers. Daffodils also come in a range of colors, from the traditional yellow to white, orange, or even pink, offering a spectrum of shades that brighten up any landscape. Some daffodils, like the poeticus variety, are known for their unique white petals and a red-cupped center adding a striking contrast to the typical yellow varieties. Each type of daffodil brings its own charm and beauty, making them a versatile choice for gardens and floral arrangements alike. Daffodils carry a range of symbolic meanings across different cultures. In general, they are often associated with renewal and new beginnings because they bloom in early spring. In China, daffodils symbolize good luck and prosperity and are often given as gifts during Lunar New Year. In Western cultures, daffodils are often linked to hope and rebirth. They are the official flower of the American Cancer Society's Daffodil Days, a campaign that raises money for cancer research. Their bright color and early blooming nature make them a fitting symbol of resilience and optimism. However, not all daffodil symbolism is positive. In some folklore, daffodils were thought to bring bad luck if they were brought into the home. It's also a superstition that giving a single daffodil to someone can bring misfortune, while giving a bunch of daffodils brings happiness. Daffodils have some unique biological features that help them thrive. One of their most interesting adaptations is their ability to produce toxic chemicals that deter herbivores like deer and rabbits. The toxic compound lycorene is found in all parts of the plant, particularly the bulbs. This helps ensure that daffodils remain largely uneaten in gardens and wild landscapes. Daffodils also have a fascinating method of reproduction. They can grow from seeds, but it takes years before they flower if grown from seeds. They more commonly are reproduced with bulb division. As a bulb matures, it produces smaller bulbs or offsets that eventually grow into new plants. This allows daffodils to spread and naturalize in an area, creating beautiful clusters that return year after year. Another remarkable trait of daffodils is their phototropism, meaning that their flowers naturally turn towards sunlight. This adaptation allows them to optimize their exposure to light, ensuring they capture as much sunlight as possible for photosynthesis. By constantly adjusting their position, daffodils can maximize their energy production, which is essential for their growth and blooming. This ability is particularly beneficial in early spring when sunlight levels can still be relatively low, helping the flowers thrive in a variety of environments. Daffodils use photosynthesis to 
get energy. Photosynthesis is the process by which plants, algae, and some bacteria convert sunlight into energy. It takes place in the chloroplasts of plant cells where chlorophyll, the green plant pigment, captures sunlight. During photosynthesis, plants take in carbon dioxide from the air and water from the soil. Using energy from the sunlight, they transform these into glucose, a form of sugar, and release oxygen as a byproduct. This process is essential for life on Earth as it provides food and oxygen for many organisms. Caring for daffodils is relatively simple and rewarding, making them a great choice for gardeners of all experience levels. After planting daffodil bulbs in well-drained soil, ensure they receive plenty of sunlight as these flowers thrive in bright, sunny locations. Water them regularly, but avoid overwatering as daffodils prefer slightly dry conditions between waterings. Once they bloom in early spring, remove spent flowers to prevent seed production and encourage more energy towards bulb growth. After the blooming period, allow the foliage to yellow and wither naturally, as this process helps to store energy for next year's growth. You can also fertilize daffodils once a year with a balanced fertilizer to help keep them healthy. With the right care, daffodils will thrive year after year, bringing cheerful colors to your garden each spring. While daffodils are primarily grown for their beauty, they have some practical uses as well. In horticulture, they are planted in large drifts to create stunning visual displays in gardens and parks. In medicine, researchers have studied daffodils for their potential to treat diseases. Some compounds found in daffodils are being researched for their possible use in Alzheimer's treatment. Scientists have discovered that daffodils produce galentamine, a chemical that can help improve cognitive function in Alzheimer's patients. Additionally, daffodils are sometimes used in pest control. Their toxicity makes them useful as a natural deterrent against rodents and deer in gardens. Some gardeners plant daffodils around other flowers to protect them from being eaten. Daffodils have long been a favorite subject in art, admired for their bright, cheerful appearance and symbolic meaning. Artists have often depicted daffodils in vibrant, still-life paintings where their yellow petals contrast beautifully against their green stems and backgrounds. In addition to their presence in traditional floral arrangements, daffodils are also found in more symbolic or abstract works, often used to convey themes of rebirth, optimism, or the fleeting nature of life. One of the most famous connections to daffodils comes from poetry. In 1804, the English poet William Wordsworth wrote, I wandered lonely as a cloud, often called daffodils. This poem described a field of golden daffodils and captured the beauty and joy these flowers bring. Here is the poem. I wandered lonely as a cloud that floats on high over vales and hills, when all at once I saw a crowd, a host of golden daffodils, beside the lake, beneath the trees, fluttering and dancing in the breeze. Continuous as the stars that shine and twinkle on the Milky Way, they stretched in never-ending line along the margin of a bay. Ten thousand saw I at a glance, tossing their heads in sprightly dance. The waves beside them danced, but they outdid the sparkling waves in glee. A poet could not but be gay in such a jonquid company. I gazed and gazed, but little thought what wealth the show to me had brought. For aught when on my couch I lie, in vacant or in pensive mood, they flash upon that inward eye, which is the bliss of solitude. And when my heart with pleasure fills and dances with the daffodils. And now onto some fun facts about daffodils. But before we do, please take a moment to like and subscribe if you are enjoying this video so far. Thank you so much for watching and please let me know in the comments what your favorite flower is. My favorite flower is actually the lily, but daffodils are my second favorite. I am a summer child and hate the cold in winter, so my heart always lifts when I see daffodils begin to bloom. I also used to live near a field of daffodils and remember running through them as a child and all the joy that they brought. Anyway, let me know which flower is your favorite. And now, on to some fun facts. Daffodils are the national flower of Wales and are traditionally worn on St. David's Day, celebrated on March 1st. The world's largest daffodil grower is in Cornwall, England, where fields of daffodils bloom every spring. The name Narcissus comes from Greek mythology. Narcissus was the name of a young man who fell in love with his own reflection. Some say daffodils were named after him because their heads droop, as if they are looking at their own reflection in a pond. Daffodils have been used to make yellow dye for fabric. In Victorian times, giving daffodils as a gift was a way to express admiration and respect. The Kunkenhof Gardens in the Netherlands plant millions of daffodils each year as part of their famous spring flowers display. 
Daffodils are more than just a pretty flower. They have a long history, deep cultural meanings, and even scientific importance. Whether they are brightening up a garden, symbolizing hope and renewal, or playing a role in medicine, daffodils continue to captivate and inspire people around the world. The next time you see a daffodil, take a moment to appreciate its beauty and the many fascinating stories behind this beloved flower. Thanks for watching and don't forget to like and subscribe for more in-depth explorations of the world around us. Teachers and homeschooling parents, if you are teaching about daffodils, please sure to check out the link in the description for educational resources to make learning fun and engaging while making prep time easy for you. Thank you so much for watching and don't forget to get messy and make lots of mistakes today. Bye!